So, Jean, talk to us about the investigation of proteins. Why is it lagged? Why is it so important? Thanks, Caroline. Well, so Nautilus is building a new platform to comprehensively and quickly measure proteins in a sample. And proteins are important because all of your cells in your body, and there's 37 trillion roughly in an average human, <laughs> your cells are made of proteins and proteins do all of the work in your body. Over the last couple of decades, humanity has made it easy to measure DNA in a sample, like a drop of blood. For example, I could take a drop of blood from you, I could analyze it in a couple of days for less than $1,000, I'll have 99% of your DNA. The breakthrough that enabled that has never occurred for proteins. The analog, if I take that same drop of blood and I want to know what proteins are in that sample, the best we can do as humanity after spending weeks and tens of thousands of dollars is get to approximately 8% identification of what's in the sample. And that has broad implications across therapeutic development, precision medicine, and has really hampered the delivery of this pers personalized medicine wave that we've been talking about for the last few decades. Uh, so, Sean, why has it been left behind? Is it just incredibly difficult? What You're putting money to work, you're wanting to get people involved, partners are interested, but how hard is it going to be to get more than 8%? That's a really interesting question. And I think one of the things that I think will be really interesting to talk about is that the way that humanity conquered the genome is by borrowing some of the processes from nature. Nature already has processes to copy and read DNA. Those are necessary for cell division. And with that, we are able to take DNA from a sample and amplify it so that you can make a bright enough signal that you can read. For proteins, once something becomes a protein in your body, it can never be copied or read back. And so the technology required to read it is quite difficult, and approaches have been very slow to develop. About five years ago, my co-founder, Parag Malik, who's Stanford faculty, came up with a very unique idea, which is really an idea rooted at the intersection of computing, data science, and biochemistry to bring a novel approach to not just measuring 8% or 10% of the proteins in a sample, but measuring comprehensively 95% of the proteins in a sample. I mean, what's been so amazing about 2020 is how we've seen suddenly biotech t t reach center stage. The decade of investment that we saw in mRNA, in you know, what we now see as CRISPR developments, has really helped us have breakthroughs when it comes to the vaccine race that we've seen upon our hands. But what, in terms of investing in knowing our proteins, what's that going to lead to, do you think? Can it push us forward five, ten years? Yeah, that's a great question, Caroline. I think that, you know, we should celebrate the enormous accomplishment that the scientific community has delivered with mRNA vaccines and with the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the sad truths, though, is over the course of the last couple of decades, the rate of new drugs being approved by the FDA has not significantly increased. And during that two-decade period, the spend in research and development in pharmaceutical companies has nearly quadrupled. And if you look at what's going on today, Biopharma has picked off many of the easy drugs for common ailments, and they need much more information that they can apply machine learning and deep learning to to be able to figure out what are the differences between healthy and sick cells, how do I build a better therapeutic. And the promise of the technology that we are working to bring to the world is that you'll be able to build better therapeutics in less time with higher efficacy and less toxicity. We're looking at a chart of your share price because you recently went public via a special purpose acquisition company, the good old SPAC. Why? What's it done for you? Well, so I think to first and foremost, to understand why, you have to understand what are our motivations for going public. And, you know, I'm a former public company CEO. I know what it's like to be public. And certainly there's a lot more scrutiny and a lot more work being a public company. But for us, the increased visibility of being a public company and the greater access to capital was really important. And it's important because our company has transitioned out of a phase of feasibility and research trying to figure out how we're going to solve the problems that need to be solved to bring this platform to the world. And now we've moved into a phase of formal development and manufacturing. And with that comes a lot of headcount growth. It comes a lot of expense growth. And being a public company aids us in a number of ways. 